And do you recall the date of this particular event that you're talking about? No. But it was somewhere in December? Yeah. Do you remember if it was the beginning or end of December? Uh, Mid-December, maybe. Okay. So you were called to go to State House um, right. for official meeting, essentially, um, right. because the president was getting an award. Right. At that point, you realized you couldn't say no, so you had to go, but you didn't have any clothes with you, and you're supposed to change when you arrived in Banjul. Right. So tell us what happened when you arrived. Um, I was waiting in the car with my mom. We waited for Auntie Khadija to come, and then she came. I changed in the car, and then I got off. I went to the entrance. My mom and Auntie Kajit went back to the office. And when I came, I was asked to, uh, I was still on the phone. I called Auntie Aisha, and then she asked um, Jimby at the time, who I didn't know. And um, a protocol call, um, Aisha Barry was asked to come and pick me up at the gate. So I went through security. They scanned my bag, and when I came out of the scanning area, Aisha Barry was there, and then she sold me my seat. When I came, all the girls were already there, so I took my seat. They are like, Danga Lid, Blue Hair, what was going on? Because I had said that I wasn't coming in the beginning because I had stomach cramps, I still maintained that story. I said, Oh, do that a small beer, but mama bugana ray, and you know, nama for serekinyo. Um, so I sat I there. think you have to um, interpret that for some of the non Wolof speakers. Dama for senor means I just forced myself to come. Yes. Right. Um, so I took my seat and the event started. And all the normal proceedings and praises and the food self-sufficiency of Gambia was at the top of it, and congratulations. And but I can vividly remember Balagaba Jahumpa on that day, and uh, then the president came, of course, before all of this, and we all stood up. That was the first time I actually saw him um, up close, not that close, but at least that much closer. And then the event finished. They wrapped up, and Jimby, who was throughout the time walking around the place, she came there and she's like, my name is Jimbe, and the president will meet you guys briefly. Um, this is not an official meeting, but he will just want to meet you briefly because he should have met you earlier, but because of circumstances, that's why. And we said, okay. And we were all excited at the time, you know, like, yay, and you know. Um, but he said that we had to wait because he's going to pray. They got off the main VIP lounge, they walk into the mosque of State House, and then we were taken into an office on the side. But the office waiting area where you had big couches in the area. So we all sat there and waited for the president to finish um, praying. So during the ceremony that had just taken place, right. did you have any role as um, winners or former contestants? Did you have any role to play at all during that ceremony? We were enjoying theatrics. We were just sitting there and copying everyone Balagaba Jahumba says, really. We didn't have any official function that we were supposed to do or usher anything. We were sitting there the whole time. You told us that some of the participants, well, the other contestants, I should say, came from different schools around the country. Um, and you were 22 in number. If you got that call at the last minute on that same day to right. attend the event, right. um, did all 22 show up? No, they were mostly two that hardly shows up in events because one lived in um, Basse and one was going to Amitage. She, repre she represented Amitage. So they were mostly not there unless they, it finds them in combo at the time. 
So on that particular occasion, were you about 20 or were you less than that? Um, no, so 22 participated in the main event, but my, then you have the winners. So when we are going to the events, it was the winners that went. So it's way less than 22 because the others were dropped out. So about like 10 of us now, if you count everyone who's a winner. So out of that 10, let's say two would be missing or one because they couldn't make it to the combos. So after this, you were told that um, you would meet the president and you were moved to a different, different room. Right. Um, can you tell us what happened next? Um, we were waiting there and then Jimby joined us and introduced herself and be like, yo, yeah, and, and then recognized us from their competition. Yo, you were this, you were that. There was a little chat here and there between all of us. Um, and then the president had come a few minutes after that. And then we went into an office, but it's the round table where mostly most of the events are, are sewn on GRTS. That's where we went, and he sat in his normal place where he sits, like right here. And then I was sitting here starting from me. Um, Aisha, Auntie Aisha was there, and uh, on the other side were the other girls as well. So he greeted us, and hi, and there were so many jokes being made. And then he did ask me, you're the one whose stomach is hurting you, you know, full as you're always scared of every little thing. And then I agreed and I, I confirmed that yes, my stomach was hurting me, that's why I did not come earlier. Um, so he talked about that he has watched the pageant and that we did really good, that this is a good badge and that all of us deserved our win and he's very proud of us and that this is not an official meeting and he's going to meet us officially with the rest of the ministers and um, yes, so now because I said my stomach was hurting me, he, the president, decided to offer a bottle of um, medicine that was brought to him and it was black water that he shaked and said that this is really good for menstrual cramps. And I told him that I'm very bad with medicine. He's like, in Wolof, right? Nana Lee, drink this. It will actually help. It's really good. So he had a cup, a plastic cup, white one, where he poured it and I drank. And I remember at the time, one of the girls said that I have this constant headache as well that she always has. And then the president said, the medicine also works for that. So, you know, you can drink it. So we all ended up drinking that medicine in cups because everyone got sick. And um, he said, it's really good. And he asked us, are you feeling any changes? I think I said, yes, <laughs> but yeah. And I actually didn't, but I did at the time. Um, so he didn't only stop there, but he gave me the bottle to take home that if I keep drinking it, it is not only going to stop my menstrual cramps from right now, but for all future um, menstrual cramps. So I took the bottle and then he gave me $50,000 and gave the winner of the senior second, the two winners. He also gave the other girls, but I do not remember the exact amount because sometimes it varies. Um, so that's what happened. And then he got up, he left the room, and then the rest of us also came out. And there were cars that took each of us to our homes. Yeah. Just a couple of follow-up questions. Right. You mentioned the contestant who got up, um, well, winner, right? The winner who got up and said she had she had a headache. Do you remember who that was? Um, she was Miss something. I can't remember. Am I, can I say her name? Um, um, Mbo was her last name. Mbo was her last name. I'm trying to click the name right now. 
You said that um, the president gave you fifty thousand dollars. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure the name will come back yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah. So, gave you fifty thousand dollars. Right. And then gave the other winner fifty thousand dollars. Is right. that correct? Right. You mentioned some of the things that the president said to you at the time. Um, do you recall anything else that he said prior to giving you this medicine? Because it sounded like he was um, encouraging the group and giving advice. Yes. So um, what else did he say, as far as you recall? Some of them are as repetitive as the courtesy call, so... But it was mostly centered around us being, taking our education seriously and also not let this win get to our heads, you know, that we will start going around and not being humble, I guess. But it was a general advice on us being, um, taking this seriously and concentrating on our school. Did he say anything about marriage or um, men in any, any way? That's what I'm talking about. That's the concept that we should be serious and focus on our education. Yeah. When he was giving you this advice as well as encouragement, how did you feel at that point? I felt that he cared and um, that it was a timely advice because a lot of people regardless of what pageantry is or under what it is organized, a lot of people try to sexualize pageants or women on stage in general. So I thought it was a great advice for us not to kind of fall for that. Yeah, so I felt like it was um, a responsible advice to give. You mentioned the black liquid that you were given, um, right. the liquid that cures menstrual cramps as well as headaches. Right. Um, when you drank it, could you tell what, what it, was, um, what it consistent, consisted of? No, it just looked like charcoal, and, but it didn't have a specific taste for me to be able to say this is what it is. I really don't know. But when he asked if um, you were all feeling better, you said yes. I remember saying yes and other people, but I don't know who from who, but I remember saying, mm-hmm, yeah. What made you say yes? I don't know. I think it's just instincts in the moment. I don't know. I really don't know, but I said that. I wouldn't say that I thought I was scared not to say yes, but instinctively is because he is promoting this medicine so well that is going to cure future cramps with so much certainty me say no did not kind of side with that or yeah i just said mm -hmm. it was easier to say mm -hmm, than to say no because then he will ask me why hannah you know medicine more than me and i couldn't have that conversation and he said it would cure future cramps. Yes. Did it in fact do that? I still cramp to death. So. <laughs> no. You mentioned um, Jimbe. Did you know her last name? Um, Jame. Jame. Yeah. So after this um, encounter, so the first interaction that you had with the president as a right. group, right. Um, can you tell us what happened next? you left State House, presumably as a group. Yes. Yeah, and then we, we went home. Uh, it was a bit late, but we got home and that was that. And now we are waiting for the official, the courtesy call. Um, so life went on. I was going to college. I did not really interact with the rest of the girls because I was the farthest in um, Yundum, and everyone else was like in the combos closer. So, yeah. Apart from the two um, other winners who were at Amitage and somewhere yes. else. Yes, Rather. right. So okay. you didn't interact with them much. Um, we're still looking at mid-December 2014. Um, or thereabouts. Thereabouts. 
So did yeah. anything else happen in December? In December, we had the courtesy call. Um, we were we had to go and stay at a hotel again for a day before um, we met him because we had to sew asobis. There is this cloth that we all had to match, and that was being sewn and it was brought in. And Auntie Tida was also there. She came. And she was advising us on um, how to be in the presence of diplomats, I guess, that we should behave, that we should not um, over-exaggerate or be all over the place, and that um, we should be um, careful of like what we say in there because you don't know what is being recorded or what is not. Um, so that happened before we had the courtesy call, and then the courtesy call happened. Whilst we were at the hotel, um, I remember Fanambo of UTG, um, she kind of brought, taught about a song that we should sing, and um, we all kind of rehearsed it for all of us to get familiar with it so that when we go, we will all stand up and sing that song which we were also busy rehearsing at before the meeting. Um, I remember parts of the song, I guess. I'm not going to ask you to sing it, don't Great. worry. Right. Um, so what happened after that? Did you, you said that you were taken to a hotel. Yes. And that was for two days. Yes, before, before the courtesy call. At this point, were you still going to school, or had you already um, stopped for the Christmas holiday? Um, I'm not sure if we have stopped, but what I know is between this time and subsequent times to come, I was missing a lot of days in school whenever we are to have any of these events or let's say later on in February for the whole independence celebration, or if we had to go to Kanilai, um, I wouldn't be at the college those days. I remember the headmistress of college um, calling my mom, or they met at some conference, and she told my mom, Lujotsu in Dombi, like what is wrong with our daughter? I, she misses days in school. And um, I, my mom came to me and she said, oh, the headmistress notices that you miss days in school. I said, did you tell her that we go for events and all this usher? My mom said I didn't. But um, yeah, that was a concern she raised. So I was missing days on actual school days. So let me get this straight. Right. This was a scholarship pageant with yes. emphasis on education and school. Right. You met the president, who again reiterated the importance of going to school. Right. However, your responsibilities as a winner meant that you had to miss a lot of school because you had to attend a lot of events. Yes. Okay. You said that at some point you had the actual courtesy, um, courtesy meeting with the president. Right. So this was after you had spent two days at a hotel. Yes. Um, and received advice about how to comport yourselves um, in the presence of diplomats. Yeah. Um, tell us what happened at that um, courtesy meeting. Where was it and um, what happened? It, ha it took place at the State House in Banju. And um, on one side of that long table, that popular same table, was us, the girls. And on the other side was ministers from the vice president of the country at the time, um, minister of education at the time, to other ministers that were there. And then the president was also there. GRTS was also present, so it was filmed on national TV. And um, um, it went on with minister spoke the vice president spoke and she was talking about how she's amazed at the talent that we display that the F Gambia has a future and hope and he, she hopes that we take advantage of this opportunity and study and take our studies seriously the um, 
minister of education went on around about the same. Some of the ministers spoke. I spoke on behalf of the girls. And I remember um, thanking him for empowering women. I remember thanking him for um, giving us an opportunity for a lifetime and that we will take this opportunity and we will run with it and we will make the best of this opportunity. And what a great experience it has been to be part of this whole um, thing and how I am inspired that we do have a female vice president. So somewhere around that and then the person who had the last floor um, was the president himself and um, he went on again about advice on not just jumping into marriages and also concentrating on our schools and also um, developing our skills and then to make sure we come back to the country to serve um, when we are done studying. Um, just to give context here, um, this was posted on the website of the Republic of the Gambia in 2014. Um, he said, Professor Jame congratulated the victors for their achievement, noting that he was amazed by the level of talent exhibited during the contest and encouraged them to, make their to take their education seriously. Um, and to utilize their time wisely. He also advised them to be respectful, to be supportive to their parents, and as well as to safeguard their self-esteem, shy away from looking low upon other people, and endeavor to serve as good role models for young people. Commenting on the reluctance of some parents in allowing their daughters to participate in the contest, President Jame blamed ignorance for the practice the president described the contest as a means to empower girls to realize and exploit their potential for nation building, saying there is nothing unreligious about the initiative. Professor Jame said he will continue to patronize the initiative and on the other hand will not associate with anything that will breed immorality in society. Um, that is basically a sum up of what he said on that day. Um, I will ask the usher to take that document from you so that we can see um, where it was posted. But in the meantime, um, please continue telling us what else happened during that curtsy meeting. Um, after he advised us and told us to do, um, to be better citizens and representatives of young people, um, then there was the ceremony of uh, gift giving. Again, on that occasion, as filmed on GRTS, there wasn't any talks about the process of the scholarship or um, what or who to get back to or when is the process of the scholarship going to start. Um, we did not ask either. So, we were given the winners, me and the high school winner. We were given Mac laptops each, uh, an iPhone, a Mac iPad, an iPhone 6, um, a box of a box with a coin gold with his head on it, printed on the coin gold. Um, A cast price, I think, yeah. And um, the other that I know I got as a winner with the other winner of the high s of the high school, and the rest of the girls didn't get the laptop or the coin, but they did get the iPad and an amount of money as well. Yeah. Do you recall how much money was given? Two hundred thousand dollars. So from the document that you provided, right. it says that you and um, Awajame, who oh. was the, I believe she was one of the winners. She's the winner of the high school. High school. Yeah. Received $200,000 right. each. Is that correct? Right. 
And then for the other um, winners, they received 100,000 each. That's yeah, the cash about prize. There. Yeah. So after um, giving you these gifts, um, what else happened during that me meeting? Um, we dispersed actually after the whole ceremony. We took pictures. Um, we stood up, we took pictures with the gifts um, in our hands, and yeah, we went home. Um, I believe this would be a good place to pause um, because it's time for the coffee break. Right. Um, Mr. Chairman, I hand over to you. Um, we will continue after the, the coffee break. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman Council, and thank you very much, Ms. Jallo. We'll take a 30-minute break and come back at uh, 12 noon sharp. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Council, are we ready to um, resume our proceedings? If we are, please um, proceed accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We are ready to proceed. Mr. Usher, can I ask that you bring the witness in? Welcome back, Ms. Jallo. Thanks. Did you have a good break? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like to remind you that you're still under oath. Right. And so you have an obligation to um, tell the truth. Right. Prior to the break, we talked about the preliminary rounds um, of the 22nd July 2014 pageant. Right. Then we talked about the competition itself. Right. And then we talked about the first meeting um, at State House. Right. It was a group meeting, and it was when um, former President Jame was receiving an award. Right. Then there was a second official meeting, uh, which you spoke about before the break. Right. And that meeting was also a group one, and it was the actual courtesy call on the president as he was the main sponsor of the 22nd July um, pageant. You talked about the conversations um, during the two meetings as well as um, gifts that he gave um, to all the winners. And you also mentioned a few names um, that we also took note of. One point of clarification for you. Um, you mentioned that the date of the Miss 22nd July pageant itself was the 21st or the 22nd of November yeah. 2014. Right. Um, was that the date of the competition itself or um, another, the preliminary round? No, the competition itself. The competition itself was? Yes, um, in December the 20. First to twenty second. Do you yeah. have? Um, and I know you said this in the beginning that you have problems recalling dates. Yeah. Do you have anything that will help guide you in terms of dates? Um, so the preliminary one was um, oh November twenty first or twenty second. That's for the preliminary rounds in two thousand and fourteen. And the pageant is the 6th, December 6th. So I have a, a screenshot of pictures that I took on certain dates, and so I can fill in the gaps of the dates with um, the pictures I printed out, yeah. So these are your own personal pictures? Yes. And based on the dates of various pictures, then you're able to plot the events, events yeah. based on that. Yeah. Um, in your statement, you provided a date um, regarding the courtesy call. Right. Um, if I can just tell you that. The courtesy call that the winners paid to the president. Right. And the date that you mention um, is the 24th of December, 2014. Right. Um, yeah. Are the dates in your statement accurate? as far as you recall? Well, to the best of your knowledge. Right, so to the best of my knowledge, when I was writing that with the dates, I did refer back to events online and also the videos that are available at GRTS to connect what date it was sown, so that was the day, because it was a live soul. So that's where I got most of the dates from, yeah. 
And so we can take the 24th of December, 2014, as the date of the courtesy call, courtesy meeting that you just spoke about before the break. As I recall, but you can confirm with the gender department. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's very helpful because obviously if you don't recall a date, that's perfectly normal. Um, if you do, or if you found out later on, we want to know how you found that date and what's the basis um, for you to say something in particular. Right. And of course, we can cross-check that um, right. based on what we have. So this second um, meeting at State House, it ended and um, you were about eight or nine. So from what you've said, you were 10 winners or about 10 winners, okay. um, but one or two would normally not show up because they were very far away. Right. Um, on this particular day, after the meeting, can you tell us what happened? Um, after the meeting, we did not um, go straight home. We went back to the hotel that we were at um, and uh, f the minister at the time, Fat Lamin Fai, asked um, us to have our accounts open. So someone was sent from um, GTB, Gambia Trust Bank, to open accounts for us because we had $200,000 cash in our hands and it wasn't safe to go home with that money. So that's what we did. We spent the night over there before we went home. So after you went home, right. what else happened in terms of your, either your interactions with the Ministry of Education, um, the Gender Department, or with State House? Just sequentially, what do you recall happening next? Um, before that happened, the, the official meeting when it ended, I remember Aisha telling us to start working on our projects and um, they will look at it so we can look at a way to implement it. That is the project we promised to do. Um, the next interaction we had was towards the event of New Year's Eve. Yes. So when Aisha, um, who you've told us was a member of the gender department of the Ministry of Education. Right. When Aisha told you that you should work on your projects. Right. Did she tell you anything else about the process and what you could expect? So for example, was there a deadline? Did, you, did she provide any other information about what would happen once you've submitted the project? Right. Um, she said they will take a look at the project and then look at how to find, how to implement it. But she said nothing about deadlines. There was no deadline for the project. Yeah. And at this point, would it be right in assuming that the projects referred to are those of the two winners? Or was it everyone's project, all 10 of you? No, the winners. Yeah. Apart from what she told you, did they say anything else about any form of assistance they would provide or any other? No, that goes back to the statement of we will take a look at it and we will see how to implement it. Um, she didn't go into either how much or what budget allocation or none of that, yeah. So it was all very vague at that point. Yes, it's basically go walk on what you promised to do. Do that first, that's the first part, and then we'll take a look at it, yeah. Um, but what was clear was that you would have to take it to the Ministry of Education. Yes. And that was the channel through which it would be processed. Yes. So um, tell us what happened after that. Um, then we were looking to attend the events of the New Year's Eve, um, which took place starting from the 9th of the 30th. Is it the 30th or the 31st? So yeah, the 30th of December at 11.34 p.m. Um, we went to um, a five-star hotel. I forgot the name, but that's where the celebration was happening. I think it's Coco Ozone. Um, 
we went there for that night. We had our dresses on, and then we spent. We were there until the morning of um, January first. Yeah. Um, we will admit um, what you're looking at, your memory aid, so to speak, for dates right. later on. Um, I do have copies, Mr. Chairman, but unfortunately they're not in color. Um, so I could still provide it if it would be of use to the commissioners. Um, while the witness is referring to the, uh, the dates and the photographs, then you can see what she's talking about. Um, because just now, for example, she referred to a specific time, but that's because of the screenshot, and it was very clear when that um, photograph was taken, so the date and the time is stamped on it. So I will provide copies, but we will continue, and then the, the version that we will admit into evidence, um, you'll get a chance to look at it, which is in um, colored, colored print. We're going to enter it as an exhibit uh, to be good for us to see. Thank you so much, Council. Um, so the New Year's Eve event um, was at Cocoa Ocean, right. and you just told us that you went there on the night of the 30th December. Right. And um, can you tell us what happened? Well, first of all, tell us what you were told about the event, what you, um, what you could expect on that particular occasion, as well as who informed you of it. Right. Um, so we had um, invitation letters that we were given to us um, to Auntie Aisha. I'm not sure who gave it to her. I will assume it's um, Jimbe. And Auntie Aisha told us that there's an event, um, the New Year celebration, and there's a table for us. Uh, was it platinum or gold? But there was a table for the Miss July 22nd folks to sit on. Um, I, that's part of the invitation letters I've shown to you. Um, so that, that was the process in which we were invited. So it was just a dinner that we were supposed to have. And then um, there was a performance, but I don't remember which artist exactly right now. And so we were there. We got there late. We were there until we got into the New Year's Eve. And then we ate and we took pictures. And as we were sitting there, we saw, this is the first time I have seen um, another winner from the previous years. I'm not sure which year exactly. And she walked in with other girls and other protocol officers. And they passed our table like, oh, hi, how are you, Nang and Dev? And I recognized her because I've seen her on TV. And um, she's like, hey, congratulations. I'm like, yes, thank you. Um, I expected us to be on the same table, but we were not. She and the uh, other girls sat at another table whilst I was on the table with um, the girls that I competed with. Yeah. So during this New Year's Eve event, where you, um, you told us what happened, but were you expected to play any particular role, or you were just there as guests? as guest. Um, did you spend the night at Cocoa Ocean after um, the dinner? No, we went home after the dinner. But we were there until about 2. Yeah. In the morning, yeah. correct? Um, after that, what was the next um, event that you attended in relation to um, yeah, your position as a winner of the 2014 pageant. Right. Um, so before an event happened, in between the 31st to the, um, to the 31st to the 1st of January, I received a call um, from Jimbe January 3rd. We, have, we are already in the next year, in 2015. Um, and then she called me and she introduced herself again. And then 
I explained to her that I was working with a team, but her call was to ask me about my project, the same project that we are supposed to work on. And um, I told her that I wasn't done with it because I'm working with a team. Um, she then asked me to do it quickly and that also um, I could take it to her for a pro faster process than to take it to the Ministry of Education, which sometimes at the end of the day just lays there. But most importantly, it ends up with them anyway. So it's just cutting the process of getting the project to them because they're the ones sponsoring the project. So when she said that, um, how did you feel about, about it? Um, I just felt anxious for a second because I know I have not started putting anything together so that's what my focus was mostly on because the line between the Ministry of Education what they're supposed to do or what C is supposed to do is a bit blurry and for the first time she's actually telling me or I'm getting information on a kind of a deadline like do it quickly and then bring it and then the, cross, the process is going to be cut and also who is sponsoring the project as well. So in that moment, I felt like I felt pressured a bit, but on the project because I know that I haven't started putting so much together. Right. So what happened after that? Um, yeah, she hung up. She called me again with a no caller ID. That's what that was. Um, and then I told her I would. So a few days later, she called back again to ask me about the project that I did not get back to her with the project and how is it going. So I told her that I've gone far into the idea of it, but I am working on the budget. I don't know how much exactly will be needed for it. I remember going to a friend of mine. Um, I remember Satang and Apsa and Innocent. I went to them and we sat in Innocent's house and we were brainstorming on the idea and how much we think fuel will cost to go to the provinces and all that. Um, but that wasn't done and I told her that, that I wasn't done with the budget part of it. And she said that I could still bring it to the state house that she would, they, she said we will take a look at it. So when she said we will take a look at it, I'm not assuming who is we because I do not know the system and it is never explained. I'm assuming there's an office that is responsible for scholarships or the pageant or whoever the we was. But that is um, what she told me. So we're still at the beginning of January because it was January 3rd when she called. Right. Asked about your project. Then a few right. days later, she called to follow up. Right. Um, what happened after that? Did you speak to her again or did something else happen? No. Um, so the call, the first call that she called me to ask me about the project was before um, January 3rd. And January 3rd was the actual day, the second day she asked me if I wasn't done with it or the budget part of it on January 3rd. And she said I could still bring it in even if the budget isn't done. Thank you for that clarification. Right. So what happened after January 3rd? Um, on January 3rd, because she said that I was supposed to bring it in, she asked me to come to the state house. And she said that a driver was coming to pick me up at my home in Yundum. And the driver did come at my home in a Jeep. And I guess he came sometime at either 10 or after 10, because I took this picture January 3rd at 9.37 PM. That's before he came. So he had come around 10 or after 10 to pick me up from home. Um, so he did come and pick me up that night. That was the first night I um, met with the president so yeah that was quite late in the night yes. after 10 p.m. yes 
when she um, when she called you to go, what was your reaction, considering the time? Again, because she had said that this is um, urgent at the time, um, I was more nervous about the project again not being the best I could present than I was about the time of it. Because at this point we have gone to events and every time we had gone, whether it is the official meeting or events, we had stay up to two or it is late. So 10 o'clock becomes um, normal time for me to either have interacted officially at the State House or at events. So you said a driver was sent to, um, to pick you up. Right. Was there anyone else with the driver? No. So the driver arrived, um, you got into the vehicle, and you were taken to State House? Yes. Can you tell us what happened upon arrival at State House? Um, we got to State House, and we passed the main gate. Um, there was no screening of um, my bag this time around, or like I did the first time I passed. And um, the driver said hi. I was in the back seat. He never brought down the window to say hi to whoever the guards were. And then he went inside. He passed the garden and also passed the second gate that goes into the residence of the state house. There was also another guard there. On the two previous occasions when you went to the State House, had you entered the gate leading to the residence or were you in a different part of State House? Different part of State House, the first part of it. So this was your first time entering the residence yes. area? Yes. Yeah. Um, tell us what happened when you entered. Um, we passed the second gate and um, the guard was like, hey, Moro, like, greeted the driver. And the car went all the way to stairs that, leaded, that led to a house. And um, Jimby was standing there. So I got off the car. She said, oh, agony. I got off the car, and Jimby's like, how are you? Hi. Um, um, I'm glad that you are here and on time. And then she chatted with the driver a little bit. And the driver drove to go around and exit the door. And I climbed the, stay, the, the stairs, and Jimby asked me to follow her. At that point, did you know the name of the driver that took you to State House? At this point, did I know? Um, yes, because of the night that we were going to the New Year's celebration, He's the same driver that took all of us with the other girls, so I knew his name from that. Um, yeah. And can you tell us his name? Landing, um, I call him Landing Jame because that's what I've referred to him. Um, he has, however, come out to say that he is not Landing Jame, that he is Landing Sanyang. Where did you get the last name Jame from? Um, that's what I've called him. I'm not sure where I picked that from, but throughout our going and coming back, I've always called him that, and he never rectified me or tell me that is not my last name. But when he came out to um, basically take issue with his name, his right. last name, right. um, did you recognize him as the same person that you've been referring to as Landing Jame? Yes, I did. Okay, so the driver, Landing San, is the one who dropped you um, that night um, after 10 p.m. on 3rd January 2015. Yes. Jimbe met you, Jimbe Jame, at the, when the, car, at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. And then um, you went upstairs. We went upstairs. Tell us what happened. Um, when she got to the door, it was locked, so she had to knock on the door. And I think she was on her phone too, so I don't know if she sent a text message or what, but she was on her phone. And she knocked on the door, and um, a guy who I would come to know as King Papa came and um, opened the door. He was not wearing shoes, um, he was barefoot, so he opened the door, and Jimby went in, and I followed her. 
and she's like oh kim papa kimoi too far that is too far so he, she introduced me to him that is how i knew his name and he's like oh welcome so kim papa led the way and then i followed with jimby we went we passed um two living rooms on both sides and then we passed another entrance that looks like an office or a waiting area and then there were stairs like five steps onto the stairs and then you turn and then you take five more other stairs and when we got there there was um, um, an office but it looks like a, a office but it has like a glass like when you go to the hospital it has a, um, a glass that you can slide for someone to talk to you through the the opening and there was a TV a small TV in it there was mattresses on the floor and um, so when we got there Kim um, Kim Papa or another oddly I'm not sure who asked this asked me to give in my bag and my phone which I did and they put it on the side inside there were two people inside the room um, they're wearing it's not a military uniform but it's navy green ish and um, one was sitting down on the on the on the sponge on the bed one was sitting on the table leaning back to watch the TV and um, Kim Papa told us to wait so there were two chairs on the side I sat on that chair with Jimby and Jimby was like, oh, how have you been? Um, you have been telling you to work on this project. How far is it? And all that. So I told her I have it because I had a paper in my hand. Um, so Kim Papa came out, not completely. She op He opened the door and told us, Dugasilen, Axelen, yeah. So before that, let's clarify a couple of things. Right. Um, at that point, did you know what King Papa's role was? Um, at the state house no but i just um thought he was a soldier just a giant soldier you mentioned that um there was one orderly who took your phone and your bag yes and then you mentioned two other people who were inside the room that you described yes so am i right in understanding that apart from yourself and jimbe there were four other people no okay. there was kim papa there was the guy who was lay, um, laying, uh, sitting on the on the bed on the floor, and there's the guy that is sitting down and watching the TV. So the orderly who took your bag would have either been um, one, one of them who went back in. One yeah. of the okay. Yeah. So there are three of them. I want to clarify um, something. Did you know the names of the other two? No, because we did not interact except yeah. So King Papa, you said you knew because Jimbe had introduced you yes. to him. Um, prior to this testimony, I had shown you pictures um, because we're trying to identify who you referred to as King Papa. Right. I will sh um, ask the usher to bring the same photographs. Right. Um, they're of different individuals. Right. I believe it's about four photographs. And if you can... Um, look at them again and point point out which one of them is um, is King Papa. I'm going to label them as A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D. And if you can just identify um, which one of those individuals is King Papa. Can you take a look at the others as well? Um, but yes, put A aside. A and C. So if I can ask you to write King Papa on each document and sign it with today's date, being the 31st of October, 2019, and then um, can you please hand it to the usher?
So because we had previously asked you about these photographs, we're able to conduct our own investigations. Right. And um, we're able to identify the individual that you've referred to, you've identified here, as Major Aliu Sanyang, who's currently serving in the Gambia National Army. But you know him as King Papa. Right. Um, can you please hand this to the commissioners? And then, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would seek to admit the two relevant documents into evidence. Chairman, with your permission, I would seek admission of um, the two documents that have been identified as King Papa, signed by the witness, as exhibits 0095A and 0095B. Request granted. Thank you very much. So thank you for um, providing that clarification. We've identified who was present on that first um, visit that you made to um, the president, former president's residence. You said you waited outside um, or in a hallway or a corridor. You waited somewhere. In the corridor. In a corridor. Yeah. You waited with um, Jim Bay, who you spoke to, and then at some point, King Papa um, called you inside. Called us, yeah. You and Jim Bay. Yeah. Can you tell us what happened next? Um, we walked into the room. There was no one in the room. Um, it was a big living room, and it has brown um, leather sofas on it. But the wood on the side of the sofa is brown, but the, weather, the leather material itself looked um, more like the drapes of um, the commissioner's table. And um, so we got in, there was a big screen and Al Jazeera was on. So we sat, Jimby sat down and in, took the uh, remote, increased the volume. And as he started to ask me about school and how is school and just petty talk or just talk, nothing related to like it's hot and general um, conversational engagements. And he's like, oh, um, Munyejuli, like, uh, the president is praying he's going to join us soon. So now at this point is when I realized that the we that she's talking about is not a team of um, scholarship experts or people that fund it, but it's actually the president because he didn't say Guy Nguyenyo, he said he is praying and he will be coming. Um, so we sat there and waited. So because I left at um, 9.37 from Yundum to Banjul, we would get there by after 10. And um, like way after 10, almost 11. And we waited for like an hour and a half, if somewhere roughly around there. We were there and the whole time, um, Jimby was on her phone, I was mostly on the TV because it was a long time and she was almost leaning back um, in the chair and with one foot on it. Um, so as we were there after one and a half hour, the president walked, walks in to the room. Now, this is the first time I am actually meeting him or seeing him up close. Um, and he had he didn't have the the big shirt that he wears or the second or the third one he had um the last piece of angaramboob as you would say and uh, trousers as you would say so he walked in and as soon as he walked in jimby stood up right um sa excellence sa excellence now i know what that is later on but um and so can you tell us what it is? It so there it's the faster pace of Sa Excellency, yeah. And um, I got up and then he shook my hand with one hand and then um, hugged me and then tapped me on the shoulder, but nothing touchy or it's just a fatherly hug. 
and then he asked me to sit down. So Jimby went right back at the chair that she's sitting at, and um, the chair set up, the sofa set up was like an L, you would say, and we were on the shutter part of the L, and he sat next to where you have the arm of the chair, and then I sat, he told me to sit next to him in that same chair. Basically went on to to congratulate me and to say you guys did a great job and he went into the competition the night of the competition and he's like who taught you how to play the riti or um, where did you get that idea from so he got into that conversation and I explained to him and he's like that's good um, but he keep insisting that I was a stubborn girl like you're very stubborn and um, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know what he meant by that. I don't know if he is calculating whatever I was presenting on stage versus me the first time saying that I would not come and then later came or oh, he got some news about me, but I wasn't sure what he meant by that at the time. Um, he also went on to talk about childhood stories that he did not feel like he did fit in, right? And I was kind of surprised that we are having that conversation in that moment, but he went on to talk about parts of his childhood in Cunning Lie, how he would drive a bicycle from some school that was far from Cunning Lie to go there and how his mom was in another village but then the other family was in another one and um, how some guy from Combo who lived in the village but moved from the Combo had this kid who will always show people that he is a Kombonka and you know they're more wise and all that so he went into those stories and I was just listening the entire time and then he will switch in between to talk about what was on Al Jazeera and then back to him talking um, one of his other main um, concern about me too was my age so he wanted to confirm with me he said, I, I did hear at the competition, you know, you mentioned how old you are. And then he asked me, are you sure that you are 19 years old? And I admitted that I was 19 years old. And then he said that, nope, there's no way you can be 19. You don't act 19, you don't talk 19, and you don't behave as a 19-year-old. I insisted that I was 19. Um, at this point, Jimby chipped in to say that that is actually a legitimate question but also kind of laughed about it so it was after all of this that he asked about the project he said oh so what did you put together I went on to explain to him my idea on organizing a debate competition within the um, um, like the provincial areas and also around this area um, no I was talking about around this area that I wanted to organize a debate competition and a drama competition here on poverty alleviation and whoever won would be given a platform to implement that idea in their respective uh, constituencies then he said that was a great idea that he doesn't mind that is awesome I should work on the budget but also his input was that I should include provincial schools, that we should kind of decentralize what we do. But that was the summary of what happened that night. Nothing inappropriate, and it was a sowing of a father figure. It, it, I didn't feel threatened. I didn't feel... Um, um, that he was at any point either staring at me or my parts or saying anything inappropriate in that 
moment and on that day? So I'd like to go over some of, um, some of the information you provided. Right. You said at one point he said he did not fit in. Right. Um, what exactly did he mean by that? Did he say? I think that is what the rest of the other explanation was about um, him in the village and the struggles that he had to go to or he, I, I, I don't know why he, but he said that he did not feel like he fit in and then he went into all these stories. You said um, at that point he said to you, um, well, he said he didn't believe that you were 19 years old. Yeah. This was on the 3rd of January 2015. At that point, you would have still been 18, isn't that correct? Yes, before my birthday, yeah. Did he refer to you as 18 or 19? Um, I think 19. I think he was calculating the years and not the month. Yeah. And then he said, you do not, did he say you do not behave like a 19-year-old? And I do not talk like a 19-year-old. And you do not talk like a 19-year-old. Yeah. When he said that, how did you feel? Um, it wasn't a surprise or a suck for me because I've heard it in society over and over again, right? And we usually, as a culture, as a society, do sexualize girls at a very early age. So for me, being someone that had a bigger bone, I grew very fast physically. And um, I've heard it from cousins from a young age, when I was even way younger than 18, who will tap you on the soldiers and say, yeah, you magde, yo, you know, or like, you, you should be married off soon, or you have, you know, the structure of an older person in school, some teachers that will say that. So it wasn't a statement that was new to me to drift me off of my, it's like something that I have heard and experienced time and time again. And um, so it was just, to me, I was just like, here we go again, yeah. But when you heard the comment, you understood it in relation to um, also your physique? Yes. You said after that, um, you talked about your project and he gave some advice about the project and then you felt that that entire interaction was almost like a father, um, father figure. Right. And so at that point, you felt comfortable. There was nothing that you thought was, was wrong in right. the situation. Right. You told us that you arrived, um, based on the timing that you gave, mm -hmm. um, you would have arrived somewhere close to 11 p.m. at State House. Right. Then you maybe spent about an hour and a half waiting. Right. Um, so let's say moving more towards 1 a.m. in the morning, between 12.30 and 1 in the morning, right. or thereabouts. Right. And then he came, and then you had this conversation. How much time did you spend talking, as far as you recall? Um, another hour and a half, I would say, yeah. One, an hour, an hour is fair, yeah. So you would have um, left State House somewhere close to two in the morning, is yes. that correct? Yes, yeah. Um, can you tell us how the conversation or how that visit ended? Was anything else discussed or um, how did it end? Um, so Jimbe, as I told you, was on this chair, kind of leaned back with the leg on. So but she's facing the TV and I'm on this side of it. And the president, when he, he used his, um, his feet cause he was sitting on the sofa and be like, hey, get up, like stop snoring on my, on my chair. And then Jimby got up and then went. She came in with um, a bag, a brown little bag. And then they said that this is a gift from them. This is a gift from us. And the gift, yeah. Oh. Um, who said this is a gift from us? Sorry? Which one of them said this is a gift from us? Jimbe, I think. Please continue. Yeah. 
and um, it was a chain it was a, a gold chain two of them one is a bigger one and one is just one with a little piece on it I still have them um, so she said to me that um, like you deserve it and the president said that it was for the good job that I had done with the project and this is like a show of appreciation for what I did. So when Jimbe gave you that gift, was it in the presence of the president or not? It was in his presence. And so she was saying to you, um, the president appreciates, she was basically telling you what the purpose of the gift was while the president was still standing there. No, so she brought it and then she said, this is a gift from us. The president went on to say that it is for the good job I have done. So it was a, a conv it was a, it was sifting from him to her and then Jimby said that I deserve it, yeah. What happened after that? Um, that was it. I, I shook his hand again, and when I went out, I picked up my phone and my bag, again still with Jimby, and we walked out of the same way we came, and the car was already there that brought me, landing, and I jumped into the back of the car, and um, he took me home. So during that first um, private conversation that yeah. you had with the president, you talked about your project. Was there any mention of the scholarship? No. No. So because the idea was that whatever scholarship it is or wherever you are going to, you have to finish this project first, that it was a prerequisite for it. So even in the last statements of all of us in the pageant was, if I win as Miss July 22nd, I would do this and this and that. So you had to do that before you had left. So to me, I was assuming we haven't gotten to the scholarship conversation yet, because I haven't done what is expected of the winner first. After um, he gave you suggestions on what to do regarding the project, Right. Was anything else discussed about the next steps? Like when, for instance, they would expect you to submit the final project or um, what you could expect going forward? So what he told me to go and change was their, um, the, 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 the group that I was involved in. So the fact that it is just in the combos. His suggestion was that I should include the provinces and then he will take a look at it again but there wasn't um, anything further than that or, or we will look at the budget or looking at it in hindsight was to stretch um, whatever work that it was that I was supposed to do with the project like go and do that one bring it back and then I edit it you go and do this other part as well well, I'm sure we'll get to that step by step. Right. But after that first private visit, you said um, that Landing, the same driver, so right. we're referring to Landing Sanyang, right. um, then took you home. <clears throat> and so you would have arrived home quite, like, quite early in the morning, between 2 and 3 in the morning or Let thereabouts. Yeah, because it will take an hour from Banjul, so let's say three in the morning, I got home. When you arrived at home, um, was anyone waiting for you, or did you, um, did, were your parents aware of what was happening? Yes, so before I left, I did tell my mom that um, Jim B has called for, um, to take a look at my project, that they are going to take a look at the project. So she did know that. And she has been calling me, but because my phone is um, with the security guys, I never saw it. So I was coming home. When I got home, we have a main door that you need someone to open from the inside. So when I got to the door, I was knocking on the door. I thought she was sleeping. Then I called, but she was already awake. She had the door of the house open, and she was sitting in the corridor of the house. So when I knocked the door and then I called him, he came out and opened the main gate of the house. 
and then she said to me kori jam like um i don't know um kori kaira i don't know but meaning like is an expression of oh is everything okay right and um so I'm like it's actually fine it's just that when we got there I had to wait for one and a half hour she said one and a half hour waiting for what I said the president and then she said yeah but this is late and can't they have you over walking hours I said they could but um next time I guess I will ask she said so you were there just until now I said yes and then she asked me what happened and then I explained to her and I remember that I was the one who was telling her, it's okay, like nothing happened or anything, I was there. And she was more concerned about the soldiers and the guards. Her concern and her being scared wasn't that because I was there with the president. Because I guess she assumed with the president I am safe, I am fine. So it's, oh, I'm going to money sold yini and, you know, hope they didn't talk to you, hope this and that. I said, no. But when I told her that I was there with the president and with Jimby, that felt a bit, oh, okay, you're good, you're safe. So um, that's when I summarized for her what I'm supposed to edit. She's like, okay, that's fine. That's the, that's the mini conversation we had. And then she went to her room and then I went to mine. So that was the night um, of the 3rd of January um, into the 4th. Right. <clears throat> Can you tell us what happened um, after that? When was your next contact with either Jim Bay or the president or anyone from the gender unit of the Ministry of Education? Um, so the next call I got, so what was happening in between the four private calls that we had there were general events that were also happening with the rest of the girls. So January 10th, but I think it started in January um, 9, Pap Juf came to Gambia in 2015, and we were supposed to attend. So again, that was related to us by the Separon, Auntie Aisha, me and the girls, um, we were dressed and then we went to this event. We were there, pub juice, dancing and having fun and we had a table to us. We were there, this picture, January 10th, was taken at 3.31 a.m. Um, so there's an event that happened after the first visit in between before the second visit, just so, and in this general, in this event, all the girls went and the same landing picked me up and all the other girls to go for this event as well. Being that it was the 10th of January, had you already um, resumed classes or school? Because you were at the Gambia College at that point. Should have been, I was going, yeah. So do you recall if this event was during the week or the weekend? No, I can't recall January, no. What you recall is that there is a photograph of you at around 3.31 a.m. Um, what else happened after that particular event, or before that? Right. Were um, you invited as guests, or did you have to do anything specific during that event? No, again, as a guest. So what happened next? What is the next event after that? Um, there was an event I had at the college. And um, so um, that was January 14th. So January 30th, yet, there is an um, event what, that... Sorry, sorry, what was the event um, on January 14th at the college? Um, I had a speech there, I cannot remember, but it was an outdoor event that took place. I, I don't remember what exactly, but I know I was there. Uh, yeah. Please continue, you were talking about the end of January. Mm, one second. 
so January 14th, after January 10th, when the Pab Juf event happened, I met the president for the second time um, on January 14th because I took this picture at 7.13 p.m. on this day. So that would have been your second private meeting with the president, is that correct? Right. Can you tell us um, how that came about? Um, the same driver came to pick me up. Did you receive a phone call prior to that? Sorry? Did you receive a phone call prior to the driver coming to pick you up? Right. So the weekend before that, I had finished um, editing that part to include the provinces and the schools that I wanted to be part of it. So I had left Jimbi a message. So Jimbi has a no-caller ID that she normally calls me with, but she also has a private number, even though she hardly, um, she has her own number that she hardly uses. So, and if you call her, you either don't get her or, or she hardly picks up that phone, but she will call you with her no-caller ID. Or if you call her on her direct number, she will hang it up and she will call you with the no-caller ID. So... I had left her a message, a text message to tell her that I am done doing that, putting in the editing they wanted me to do, and what should I do next, right? Um, so I think she received that message that weekend, and then she got back to me for this January 14th. And um, she asked me to come. It was the same landing um, who came to pick me up at home after 7 um, um, seven thirteen p.m. So the purpose of this second private meeting was again to discuss your project? Right. Was it obvious to you um, whether you would be meeting Jimbe alone or the the president as well prior to arriving at state house i i knew prior to arriving even though she didn't say it but going by what um happened the last time i assume is the same and he's the one who asked me to edit it so if i'm taking it back it would be to him or he will be there so this time around i knew that i was taking it to him so you would have arrived at state house somewhere after 8 p.m yes let's say Okay. Right. Um, can you tell us what uh, what happened when you arrived? Um, same routine. We passed through the gate and the second one. Um, but this time around, um, Kim Papa did not come to open the door. And it was not at the same place um, that we had gone to the first time. This other house room was closer to the entrance on the left and we did not have to go through stairs. But we passed um, a corridor, and I could remember there was, um, what do they call them, parrots. There were two parrots in a cage, and uh, I remember Jimby calling their names. I can't remember anymore, but we passed the carrot cage, and there was a door, and we went into um, that house. Again, a living room different chairs, different decorations, and um, but this time around it had pictures, family pictures on the walls of his son and his daughter and um, the wife at the time. Those pictures were also there. Um, so the TV was also on. I think this was the day there was um, rustling between um, was, there was a Senegalese rustling, a major rustling that he was watching. Again, um, this time around, he was not having the big Ngarambu on, but a lesser one, the, the, um, the Ngenso one. The, the last piece that you have is what he had on, and um, the pants that he was wearing. So he looked way, way smaller than he actually is. And he's not wearing a hat like the first one. And 
I don't know if me staring at him, he kind of miscalculated that at, at that point, at some point, because I would actually stare into his head, right? Because I was just fascinated by how the persona, like, it's just so different, right? But again, um, I grew up my whole life seeing a big, big ngarambuba and a hat and a knife on top of a TV, on top of a car, you know, and then now it's just this head that looks like a football and just, you know, so I couldn't say it directly, but that that was something that was happening that I, I was doing and I was looking at. Um, but then, yeah, he was very much into the body, you know, and judging who he thinks is this and it's not that. And as we were sitting there, I was also there watching the TV. Jimby was also there. And he had a phone that was next to him most of the time. It always is. And um, he's on the phone. He's talking to somebody and then in English. And then he hangs up. And then he picks another call. But the oddlies who were just outside the room will always let him know that there's a call to pick. And then he will pick the call up. And when he needed something, when he needed something, he would also call in. I hardly do hear what he is saying, but an oddly will walk in with a bottle of water and place it down. And the oddly will also walk in with a pack of cigarettes and place it down. So now this is the second visit is when I am actually not like scared or anything, but I'm just so, it's like the veil is just unfolding. I was like, oh, okay, I wasn't expecting that. And I wasn't expecting that. I didn't know that you smoke. And why are you comfortable smoking in front of me? You know, and, um, but as I was having those questions too at the same time, um, a Seth came in his personal chef, um, who also brought in food that he was supposed to eat later on the table. And But what made me get back to the space that I was in is that it's either he called his wife or his wife called him when I was there. And he was on the phone, hello, Sherry, and he was speaking French mostly. Um, so they spoke, and then he spoke to her, good night, bonne nuit, and all that, and then he plays the phone. So that put me back into my space of, oh, okay, all right, that was cool, and I'm in her sitting room, and that's that, right? Um, so the conversations went on, he was talking about the bore, thank God the bore kind of finished, because then he got in, back into... Um, the project and what the project needed and how much he thinks will go into the project. So you mentioned that when you saw him that evening, you were surprised by the fact that he appeared very big on TV, right. but when you saw him, he appeared much smaller, seemed casual, didn't have his hat on. Right. I forgot to ask you a question um, before your arrival at State House. Right. Um, was there any kind of comment or input on what you should wear? Yes. Um, to go and see the president? Yes. Tell us so about that. So this pickup, um, Jimbe came for this pickup as well. So when I came, I was um, before this what I was wearing on here, which is um, a blazer and a shirt and then a, a long skirt. I was wearing a dress because I wore a dress the first time that I went, um, a brown dress. So she said to me that why do you like wearing um, mere clothes, like older people clothes, that the cloth was big. Um, and she asked if I could change the clothes and, you know, something more fitting to me. By something more fitting, as in something more fitting to your body? Yes. Um, so you had this conversation, was it the first time or this, um, or this time, on the 14th of January? 
So the second time is when we had this conversation. The second time. Right. And so what about the 14th of January? What do you mean by the 14th? Is the, we are talking about the 14th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what did you do after she suggested that you wear something more fitting? I insisted on what I was wearing. Yeah. Um, at that point, um, what was going through your mind when she tried to suggest what kind of clothing you should wear to go and meet the president? Hmm. Um, in that moment, I think I was um, just a bit offended that she thinks I'm not stylish enough because Mandamaya car dress book, right? And you interpret that that i liked i liked the dress it was a favorite dress yeah um so you felt offended um but you still maintained what you wanted to wear yeah. um which was that long dress and um you told us what happened when you arrived um you mentioned that at some point um his wife called or he called his wife yeah and um you said after that conversation you thought oh i'm in her sitting room and then you thought um you went back to your own space what do you mean by that the space of there is nothing inappropriate happening in a way because the honest truth is i felt that was happening, not inappropriate to my body or sexually, but, in, but inappropriate for a president to be smoking in my presence. Yeah. And so from everything that you've said, right. um, that appears to be a different residence, meaning the family residence, because you saw photos of the family right. on the wall, which is different from the previous residence that you described. Right. Um, can you tell us what else happened um, that evening in terms of the conversation that you had and anything else that happened? Um, so he asked me how much I have had for the budget for the project, and I told him it should be like around $60,000, and then I think he offered to increase that, that 60000 wasn't enough, so 100000 dollars he will do for, for that project. So you suggested a particular budget, 60000 and yes. he increased that budget and said you should make right. it more. Um, at that point, did anything else happen? Did he um, say anything else to you? Did he do anything else? I think I made a comment about, I will take it to the Ministry of Education. And then he said, oh, no. So because I was thinking that I will get the money on that day to take it. So I'll take the project to the Ministry of Education because I can't implement it without them anyways, because I need their connections to schools. And the letters will be written on their behalf and on behalf of a pageant of what they've organized. Um, so when I said that, he said to me that the money would actually, uh, um, he will call me to come and pick up the money, but, so it means it wasn't there for that night, but he will call me to come and pick up the money. And, um, yeah, I think he says something like it's, um, like that I should slow down because immediately he talked about it. I said that I was going to take it to the ministry. Yeah. We had that conversation too. Apart from the discussions surrounding the actual project that you were working on, right. did you discuss any other issues that night? Um, that was the same night. He also said to me that he would that he thinks that I am brilliant, that I'm able to pull this together in a very short sp um, span, and he offered that if I would like to work as a protocol officer at the state house. Um, I thought it was a great offer at the time, but also I know that I have never walked in my life and I do not have any experience of working anywhere. And it was nerve wracking to me in that moment. 
I am very bad with um, capturing names or dates. So I figured it will not be a great idea to work at such a high office, knowing how clumsy I can be. So to me, I was telling him that that would be a great offer if I study and come back. And I don't mind serving the State House or the White House, but right now I will not be able to do that because I will not be able to live up to your expectations. At that point, he knew that you were attending, um, you were still in school, you were right. attending the Gambia College. Right. Um, and he had given you a lot of previous advice about focusing on your education and um, not being distracted. Right. Yet in the same vein, he was offering you a job as a protocol officer, yeah. which would have meant having to leave school in order to take up that position. Is yeah. that correct? Yes. When he made that offer and you declined, um, what happened next? Did he say anything else? Um, I think he, he understood. He said that, okay, that's, that's, I think he was okay with it. He didn't say much or get into the common statement of you're stubborn. Yeah. And how did that, um, that evening end? Um, it ended with Jimby left the room to go get um, the chef that I said came in uh, with the food, and I think he was about to have his dinner. Um, he hugged me that night too. Again, nothing. Um, um, nothing funny, but I guess looking at it now and not at that time, the fact that he was wearing um. A small genso probably is not the greatest um, um, time to hug, but there was no touching or anything inappropriate. And then I had him say that this was a productive evening. We have had so much on. Uh, we've talked about so much. And then I left for home again with the same driver. So from what you've said that evening, you didn't feel any um, anything strange. You didn't think there was anything inappropriate about at your the, interactions at the time. Yes. How much time did you spend at State House this time? Mm. Well, at the residence. It was way less than the previous one. It wasn't that late that day because we got there earlier, but. Um, two hours, maybe. Yeah. So it was a longer period because there was so much more happening. But also, I got home earlier because we left home earlier. So if you left home sometime um, after seven thirty, and you got to State House somewhere after eight p.m. Two hours right. later would have been sometime after 10 p.m. So you would have gotten home around 11 after 11. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, after that, can you tell us um, what happened? What was your next interaction? Um, the next interaction was a official um, interaction that happened. Um, Sorry, just to clarify, you said right. the same driver dropped you off at home. Yes. And that would be landing Sanyang. Yes. Okay. Right. Um, please continue. Um, so, okay, this is kind of like, so in between that, what happened was Jim B formally visited my home. So she told me, she called me that she wanted to come and see uh, my mom and my family to extend greetings and to congratulate them on my win and um, if they were home. That evening, mom was home. Dad was also at home. So Jimby came to the house. Um, I'm not sure which driver brought her because the driver stayed in the car or not. I can't remember. Do you recall if this was still in January 2015 or um, later than that? No, it was still in January, between Je January and before the independence celebration between there. So sometime between January and um, February yeah. 18th. Um, and from what you said, this is a, um, 
this is something she initiated because she called you and wanted to come to the house. Yes. Um, tell us what happened when she arrived. Um, she arrived at the house, you know, greeted all the kids, ran out because she came in a big black car with um, the same number plate. Was it a plain number plate or the GG plate? But it was some um, a number plate that will call attention to, you will know it's a government car or something like that. And all the kids came out, all my siblings and myself, because I just came from helping um, my uh, cousin brother fetch water, because we didn't have water at the time, at that time in the house. Um, but it is our house. It is a home that my mom built before I ever thought of competing in the Miss July 22nd pageant. Um, we had electricity already in the house. We had molded and painted the house. It was actually complete. The fence was um, quarter way, so it's not like all the way up at this time. But there was no water in the compound. So when Jimmy came in, there were pleasantries and greetings, and my mom invited her into the room, and she had a black book and a pen in her hand. They spoke, Wolof, how are you? She sat on the couch, my dad and my mom and myself. And she's like, well, I am here to say, you know, that you have a great daughter and that you should protect her and that we really want her to further her education because um, we think that she would be a great asset and almost most of the things that Yaya Jambe had said and that the president is actually very proud of her and um, she would like it if she concentrates on her education and not be distracted by um, um, men or uh, other issues, but to actually be a productive part of society. That's what Jimbe was relating. She kept saying we, we, we is that yeah. correct? Yes. And what did you understand by we? Um, I, I'm trying to make sure that I talk in, in the, in that moment and not on my knowledge of now. Um, the we, I, at that time, I don't know how I felt about the we, if I was understanding it from we the government or we as in him and Jame as a team. I wasn't sure how I interpreted that at the time. So um, continue to tell us about that conversation that she was having with um, you and your parents. Um, so she talked about that and also re irritated re that if I'm really serious about my studies, that they really want to help me um, 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 continue my studies and do my studies. Mind you, um, before this, I've never had the conversation of the studies with Jimby or the scholarship or where I want to study at this point. Um, they did that and my mom also thanked her and said thank you for coming, you know, thank you for all that you do. This is really great. great. And um, if she can get scholarship to go and study, that's fine. She's my first burn and I am very strong with education. I myself, without scholarship or sponsorship, I'm able to take myself through college and university and um, all that, so that would be nice. And Jimby said, yeah, sure, let's see how her project does. My dad also weighed in and thanked her, and um, Jimby then started to walk out of the room, because there's a long corridor. Um, she didn't, on that day, give my parents anything, or give me anything, or, you know, as a way of saying thank you. That did not happen. It was all word of mouth exchange. When Jimby stepped out of the house, my cousin brother was coming from the top at the time um, with a wheelbarrow and b b um, bottles of water on it because we used to go and fetch at a home opposite us that had tap at the time. We didn't because we just moved in. And um, I think my mom even applied at some point, but it takes forever for them to respond or bring in the water. So when Jimmy stepped out and saw the, my brother with the water, he said, oh, you guys do not have um, water here? I said, no, water has not been instilled. So she said, okay. Jimmy went to the side with her phone. She made a call. I'm assuming she made a call to reach the president at the time. 
um, then whether she called back the president or the president called him, I don't know who called who, but Jimmy gave me the phone to answer. But while she was on the phone, I could hear her say, Sax Lindsay, Sax Lindsay again. And as soon as I heard that, I knew that it was the president that she was talking to. So she gave me the phone to talk to him. And um, I took the phone and he said, hello, you know, you fuller girl. Again, we got into, she got into the jokes of um, tribal jokes and uh, how are you, Jimby? We came to visit, Jajol asked, um, your fathers came to visit you today as in the jovial relationship between Jolas and Fulas, that our fathers have come to visit us. And um, at this point now, I also call him Sir Excellency because that's what I hear everybody call him. And so I wasn't calling him Oga. I wasn't that psycho, psychopathic or fancy. I was not calling him daddy or scholarship chief in master. I wasn't calling him any of that. I was calling him Sir Excellency because that's what I picked up from Jimby and Jimby is closer to him. So if Jimby calls him that, it is only appropriate that I call him that. And he did answer to that as well. So he went on to say that he did hear that we do not have water and um, that he will take care of it. That was it, that he will take care of it. So that phone call ended, there were greetings and pleasantries, and then Jim B went home. And then water came in sometime sooner than one would anticipate, I guess, yeah. And what do you mean by that? Was that a matter of days or weeks or months? Hmm. I don't think it's up to months. Uh, you can't look elsewhere for okay. an answer. Um, just from what you recall, right. um, was it a matter of days or a matter of weeks? Um, I would say weeks. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't that long, so it should be weeks. And so water came in the form of, like who came to install water? The National and Electricity Water. Nowick. Nowick. Yes, okay. Nowick installed the water. So, but they started with the digging first. Um, they digged in, and I remember my, um, who was it? I have an auntie who was home who was like, no. No, do yaga ni la wah nengen tu kalau dah happy fini, kan nengka fili jil ayat. So, but so it means it was faster. It came faster. They dig, digged, put in the pipes, and then installed the water at the, at the house. And uh, who paid for that? Sorry. Who paid for the installation? I did not see the um, invoice for the installation. I did not see where it was given. The information I got on it is that um, it will be taken care of. So I'm assuming um, it is paid for by the president or Jim B, or it was loaned or whichever happened. I do not know the um, money transaction that happened there. So after that visit um, right. from Jim B, mm -hmm. and then sometime later, um, could have been a matter of weeks, now I installed running water um, at your home. What happened next? What was the next interaction that you had with either Jim Bay or the president or state house in any, any sort of form? Um, the next interaction was a festival in Kanin Lai that was called the Farmers Market something. So the idea of this event was farmers in the region were to bring their product and their produce to the, the similar to the Makati Square of Banjul that is in Kanilai. It is in the residence of the State House. Um, that they will display their products and the president will take a look and will help them kind of buy off their products. 
So that is what the event was, and we were to go there. I remember it was a bad day of a cousin sister of mine that I was attending, but then I rushed home. I packed my bag because they said that we were going to spend three days at State House. Um, on this trip, not land landing did not take us. A boss took us. A boss from one of the ministry was used, ministry of something. I think if I look in the pictures, I'll see the name of the ministry on the bus. I do not know the driver, and I've never met the driver. And I was the last person to be picked up. So the boss went for the girls who lived in Bacau and Kanefing and Sarah Kunda, and I was the last one to be picked up. And I remember the girl from Amitage traveled all the way from Amitage to the Combos to also um, be part of that event. Oh no, she didn't come to the combo. She traveled from Amite to Kanilai, so we met there. Um, so yeah, I jumped on the bus and then we went to, again, I can vividly remember this was school days because I know that I, um, I missed it. We went to Kanilai and when you get into the main gate of the Kanilai, um, before you get to the gate on your right is the field where the events happens and then you open a gate where you go into the premises of the Kanilai State House and when you go further there is um, it's like a compound and it has a fence on your right and there's another compound on your left that also is a compound but it is the president's residence and on this, ha on this side is a um, it has houses and homes, but it looks like um, like a boarding school setup, but in a bigger way. So when you got in, there's a big um, house, and when you walk down the hall, there's a bedroom on every on left and the right. One, two, three bedrooms. Then you have a washroom. One, two, three bedrooms, and then you have a washroom. And uh, so this is where we were based. This is where we got to. And um, there was a a house that I would say it's almost um, this size and there were big queen size beds inside the house that was enough for all of us as the girls to stay in that house and on the adjacent side of that was a similar one where the protocols were leaving and had to spend the night in so this is where we settled in and um, So the event started on February 2nd. Oh no. Um, January 29th is when we got there. Um, and then we spent January 29th, uh, January 30th, and January 21st in Kanilai. Right. So on the first day, was um, the display of um, the fruits by the farmers. So we were home most of the time. So when we got up in the morning, um, that is the first time I actually was able to know which protocol was kind of who or who was related to who. I remember meeting Ndei, who was said to be Jimbi's sister. I remember seen again the same Aisha Barry who picked me the first time I went to the gate. Um, I remember other protocols that I've seen around and the chief of protocol at the time who was also, okay, I forgot the name so I wouldn't say, uh, but the chief of, the assistant chief of protocol who was a female at the time, um, she also lived in that room. So we lived in this room with our chaperon, Auntie Aisha, and we spent the night there together um, all these three days. As the first day was the display of farmer's market, the second day was, um, was a religious gummo night that we went to the residence, so you cross, we left our gate and our compound, we went into the next one, and on the outside, before you get into the residence of the president, there were all groups of religious, um, um, what will they call it, 
gummo groups that do sikar and you know so there were chairs and ministers were supposed to sit in the front and we were right behind the president me and the other girls but me on the first chair as usual so but at this point what has been sifting or i've been calculating in my head was in public the president really almost did not know my name and i've already interacted with him um twice personally before all this but in Kanilai and in events in between this meeting and not meeting was um, um, like if you passed us, he would engage uh, with almost everyone. And for me, it would be like, oh, yeah, um, uh, you know, there was a sense of forgetfulness, a portrayal in public that he did not um, know me in a way. And that kind of confused me a little bit. And even when he's coming to seat the Kim Papas and the Oddleys will have his bag that they'll put next to him. And um, he would not, um, Kim Papa will not also even look the area I am seated at. And um, Jimby also will engage all of us, of course, in a very nice way, but not to show any sense of I know her or I don't. So that is why I know, or I believe, that most of the girls, of course, who say they do not see what they see or they do not see, in fact, any form of closeness, why that tactic at the time, willfully being played by Yaya Jame, did achieve that, right? So I sat behind him, and the chairs were supposed to be filled by ministers, and they were not filled. I think the Gamo people went on, and there was video being taken. Until a while, the protocols realized that the ministers were not coming to join that, or whoever was supposed to take those main seats in the front. Um, then they asked us to move to the front. So that's when we moved to the front. So now I am sitting to the chair next to the president on the right-hand side and then followed by the girls as we were in sequence of uh, winners. And we were there, and I remember me and the girls making the jokes when they told us to go in the front. I'm like, oh my god. Because in the back, we were so sleepy. This is about 3 in the morning. And at least if you're in the back, you can kind of doze off or snooze or jinko and all that. But if you're in the front, all the cameras are right in front of um, you, you can't. So there's this um, just being a miscomportment that one had to do for hours. And he clearly was enjoying the whole, you know. And um, that's what happened at night. And no one can leave until he leaves. He left like after four in the morning to go pray. He left to go and pray Fajr. So it must be after four somewhere. So when he left and we were all like, thank God. And then we all moved again and went to the next compound where we stayed and then went to bed. Yeah. So we'll leave it at that for now because it's time for the lunch sure. break. And then when we come back, you can continue your story and then I will ask you some follow-up questions. Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Council, and thank you, Ms. Yalo. We will take a one hour break and come back at um, uh, half past two. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. <laughs>